live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. How's it going, gentlemen? Welcome again to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay, at Scott McKay on both Twitter and Clubhouse, Real Scott McKay. On Instagram, you can find the video goodies at YouTube.com by searching my name, S-C-O-T-M-C-K-A-Y. The website is MountaintopPodcast.com. Hope you'll visit. And gentlemen, if you're not yet a part of our thriving Facebook group, I say this every week, I'm going to say it again. You need to get on over there. It's different. It's fun. It's a positive experience for all the guys who are members. If you're already a member of that group, please invite a few friends. Help this thing grow. You can find it at the Mountaintop Summit on Facebook. Once again, this week for the second week in a row, my good friend and ever popular Helena Nista is with us from down under. And she is a world famous sex expert and her YouTube channel guys is just absolutely crushing it. She's up to several hundred thousand subscribers, which makes her a world class influencer amongst, well, really all YouTube users, but particularly as a sex advisor. And it's very well earned, of course, because uh, if you guys have ever heard her talk on the previous three or four times she's been on the show, she knows her stuff. Helena, how's it going? Welcome back. Really good. Thank you so much for having me back. You're quite welcome. Now, today we're going to discuss a subject that's been on my mind for probably the better part of a year, and I just couldn't find the right guest to discuss it with. And as a matter of fact, when I brought it up with you, it warranted a bit of discussion before you really felt comfortable talking about it, which only basically galvanizes in my mind that this is something people don't talk nearly enough about. It's very real to me, and I hope it'll uh, resonate with this audience, too. And what I'm talking about is what I've termed female sexual personalities. And, you know, for the good of the cause in getting this thing kicked off properly, this thing being this podcast episode, of course, you know, we talk about personality type in general terms. You know, we can sort of slot people as having a certain kind of personality, as per Myers-Briggs tests or Enneagram, et cetera. It's a very popular thing to do to try to categorize people by their overall personality type. And, you know, we've had Dr. Benjamin Hardy and others on this show who talk about, hey, you know what, you can have a little bit of control over who you are. Uh, it isn't something that you're stuck with if you don't exactly like elements of your personality. And I suspect that not only do we as human beings have a sexual personality type that may perhaps parallel our overall personality type, but that we can also sort of decide what sexual personality or you know, perhaps persona would be a better way to put it, we want for ourselves. And maybe perhaps fine-tune it to a specific situation and or a specific partner. So that's what I would love to dive into as a topic today. Because I will tell you, Helena, I'm convinced that women in particular, and you know, probably we as men also, do indeed have a sexual personality type. Now, I can start listing a whole lot of elements here to kind of help drive this conversation. I think a woman may be timid sexually, perhaps kind of sticking her toe in the water versus unleashed and wild and just like a wild tiger ready to spring into action. Another one would be adventurous versus conservative. Uh, maybe a woman likes to have sex a certain way and do it a certain way and stick to a certain set of practices or vibes or even sexual activities, whereas another woman may be far more adventurous. Let's just try anything. I'm up for anything. Every position, everything is fair game. Active versus passive. Women can be very athletic and move around a lot versus kind of you know, be a little more slow on the draw and dare I say some of them just lay there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dominant versus submissive would speak for itself. Reserved versus outgoing. Um, are we going to be really playful or are we going to be kind of more straight laced? And, you know, that kind of rhymes with the adventurous versus conservative bit, I think, but I think it's different. Soft versus strong, mm. right? Uh, talkative and noisy versus quiet, which I think goes along with reserve versus outgoing also. And my perhaps favorite, which surely we have to discuss, naughty versus well-behaved. So 
those are some of the avatars that I have in mind to describe certain women's personality types. Uh, what do you think about all that? Am I onto something? Yeah, absolutely. I love it how you kind of, you know, introduced this whole topic. And I am, I guess I never really thought about it this way. And I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around it as we, as we're speaking about this topic, because I always just see a woman as an individual when it comes to her sexual personality. So that's why it'd be hard for me to kind of categorize women that, yeah, these are only like this, or these are always like that. But it makes, it makes a lot of sense. I really feel like it is also, there's definitely room for movement and for sort of shifting and changing, you know, the most sexually adventurous and uh, open woman at times will just want missionary position and to be held. Um, So yeah, it is, it is a very interesting topic. And I guess it comes down to speaking, speaking to men, you know, what kind of woman sexually do they want? And hence, can they create this kind of win-win sexual situation with their partner who maybe, and maybe the partner, the woman isn't as open, adventurous, wild, or outgoing, or whatever the quality of her sexual personality is that he would like. But then can we create that together in the bedroom so that we both can kind of uh, negotiate a compromise or, or just find find a way where we both get what we want without crossing our own boundaries in any in any way. Well, I love where you've taken this conversation because you've expressed very powerfully and I think clearly how a sexual personality type is both like our overall personality type or perhaps very different in some ways from it. Now, the first thing you mentioned is, well, what it came down to is we're all individuals. Each one of us is very unique from someone else. And indeed, if we're talking in terms of Myers-Briggs measurements, you know, not all INFPs are exactly alike, like it's a Chinese horoscope or something. Mm -hmm. So there are traits that kind of follow along with a certain personality type. And I would suspect it's kind of similar for sexual personality type. Although, of course, I have never run across a study that deeply describes this, or else I would have had that person on the show, for sure. But (laughs) you are the most open and knowledgeable and indeed flexible sexpert we know of, who's a woman, and we enjoy having you on. So, like I said, I'm pleased that you brought certain elements to this conversation that, you know, maybe I didn't expect. And one of those that you sort of alluded to right now is this can change. This is malleable. And where I kind of sense you're going with this is that, hey, you know what, guys? A woman may not have the same sexual personality with every guy she's ever with. It may have a lot to do with us and our leadership and how we make her feel comfortable, what we introduce her to, how we satisfy her, what she likes or perhaps doesn't like about how we're interacting with her sexually. And that can shape what her sexual persona is going to be vis-a-vis her direct interaction with us uniquely, right? Absolutely. I love that. Exactly. Exactly. Because a woman to really fully express herself sexually in whatever kind of personality she might have in bed, she needs to feel very, very safe. And she needs to feel like she can trust you and she can surrender to you sexually, etc. So how are you as her lover? How are you? Can you lead in bed? Can, or can you be more dominant or more submissive at times? You know, people can play those different power dynamics. But can you create that kind of safe container for, for her to open up fully as a, as a sexual being? Because they also another, I think, very important part of this conversation is that unlike our actual personality, the sexual personality is so strongly affected and repressed and constricted by the society at large. There are so many, I can call them sort of forces in the society that don't want us to be as fully sexually open and awakened and embracing our sexuality fully. And so it's very hard still to be fully unashamed and open about your who you are sexually and maybe even more particularly for women but you know it affects every single person that kind of societal repression and and lack of acceptance for sex 
being a normal and natural and beautiful part of who we are. And so that can also affect this, this personality to a large extent. So having a sort of healthy, safe environment in the bedroom means that we can start, and particularly your women, because your woman, because that's who we are talking about here, your woman can start shedding those layers of repression and restriction and shame and guilt or awkwardness about sex, about her pleasure, about her orgasms, about her body, etc. So yeah, you as a as her partner, as her lover can do a lot to uh, bring that full expression of her sexual personality, whichever whichever type she is. You know, Helene, I think it was a great point you brought up about how women in particular feel kind of repressed or perhaps restricted in terms of expressing their sexuality uh, because of slut shaming or years of whatever we've done as men or women have done to themselves, whatever society has done to sort of limit women from being outwardly sexual. And mm. this is very confusing to a lot of men because first of all, we're not women. We don't realize fully what it's like to be of that mindset. So I think a lot of guys really see strippers and sex workers as the most outwardly sexual ones out there. Therefore, they've kind of led themselves to believe or perhaps been led to believe by certain uh, products or videos or literature out there that these women are indeed the most sexual ones. And if they want a woman who's good in bed, they've got to somehow find a woman who is air quotes out there sexually. Uh, whereas a lot of women, I believe, are sort of like Lois Lane versus Supergirl, and I know that's sort of a sideways analogy, but somehow it makes sense, where they have this very prim, proper, outward persona. And I will admit to you, sometimes it's very thinly veiled. The right sexual innuendo just makes them explode once they feel safe with you, like you're not going to judge them sexually. But in bed, in particular, they just turn into little tigers. I mean, every MILF-like hot mommy who's like over 28, who's been divorced, uh, you know, kind of has this <laughs> alter ego who's just a sex vixen in bed, or most of them, yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> it's been my experience. <laughs> what can I say? Whereas, you know, outwardly and to perhaps people they're not sexually interested in or attracted to or have nothing to do with their sex life at all, they're very prim proper, very businesslike, almost neuter sometimes. And this is extremely frustrating to men to try to figure out what a woman's sexual personality is going to be like, right? Exactly. And yeah, you can never really figure it out unless you can have a good communication with her about sex. Certain things we just need to ask about. Of course, we can learn things by just being sexual with our partner. But to truly um, get to know her desires, her needs, you know, what really makes her the most happy, orgasmic and sexually fulfilled human being, you have to be able to speak to each other about this. This is where so many people ask me, oh, will she like it if I do this to her? Or how, you know, how can I satisfy her better? How can I touch her better? And I'm just like, I don't know. You're going to have to ask her. There's so many things I can teach you, so many different techniques and so many fun ways to explore sexuality together. But ultimately, every single woman is different. So you need to be able to talk to each other about what really works for you sex-wise and what will give you everything that you want and desire. Now, I think a lot of guys are listening to this going, all right, Helena, this sounds like a cart and a horse. I'm not going to know a woman's sexual personality until we're already in bed together. Well, okay, genius. <laughs> you know, how do I get there? <laughs> but you elaborated by saying, in effect, it's okay to have a conversation about this. And you kind of just threw that out there so glibly that I think it would bear a little clarification to guys that, yes, you know what, even from my opinion and my personal experience, guys, women will talk about sex. Women so often, it seems, or more often than men, for sure, have far fewer hangups about having a casual conversation about sex in general terms. Yet so many guys are thinking, well, I've been taught to believe women don't really like sex. Women put out... Uh, women give it up and men get lucky and men score. And the whole social surround about sex is that women don't enjoy this so much. And it's a prize that men win from women almost against their will. And from there, you get 
certain man-hating feminist types who start saying things like all sex is rape and every birth is the man's fault and blah, blah, blah. And it becomes sort of a politicized thing, but it kind of sticks in the craw of men everywhere where, you know, we kind of have to play keep away from this subject of sex or else the woman's just going to run away and I'll never get any and I'll be frustrated. But I hearken back to a show you and I did about a year ago where we were talking about sexual conversations with women. And I kind of caught you off guard with a practice I used to have of reading the room with women to see if they were kind of reacting or responding sexually to me in a way that really felt to me like they were attracted and me just throwing on the table. So when was the last time a man gave you the kind of orgasms, you know, you want and deserve. And you sort of chuckled at that saying, you know, guys can't just haul off and say that to every woman with, with which I agreed. But it's amazing how, when you kick off a conversation with a woman who is indeed showing signs of being sexually attracted, maybe if you're not as blunt about it as I am, perhaps, but you indeed engage in that conversation most guys may be cringing, thinking something bad's going to happen, but women are often glad you brought it up. And exactly. it makes the sex better when it actually does go down because you already have a head start on knowing how to please each other, knowing what's okay, what's not okay. Uh, maybe even talking about the condom conversation and you'll find out her tubes are tied and all kinds of wonderful things because you had this conversation you know, including about STDs or whatever, before things got hot and heavy. And when a woman feels comfortable with you, man, everything comes down to that, doesn't it? You really can have these conversations. And maybe we should talk about what kind of personality type we have in bed also. What a nice dimension to add to that, right? Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And it right. doesn't have to be complicated. You can just start with questions like, do you like it when I do this? Or did you like that when I try? Or, or how how can I make this better for you? Or would you like to do this sort of thing? How do you feel about yeah. oral sex? You know, do you like different positions? I mean, it's funny mm. because if you talk about this matter of factly, it's amazing how it starts warming women up. It starts feeling like mental foreplay, which you and I have also talked about before. <laughs> so <laughs> even if it starts off sort of innocuously, it turns into a red hot seduction opportunity sooner than later. And what can I say? That's just how male-female interaction works, isn't it? That's the dance. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can hear it in your voice. Now I'm going to throw a spanner in the works for you guys in the UK. That would be a wrench in the machine here in the United States. As much as we've talked about so far in this show about how a guy can sort of lead a woman into having a sexual persona, I have to say this. I've seen a whole lot of different sexual personality types in my life, regardless of where I lead things or how I lead things, or even in terms of what the situation is. I'm who I am. I bring to the table sexually what I bring to the table. I treat women a certain way. I make them all feel comfortable. Yet I did find that some women are much more athletic and some women are much more wild and some women are much more soft and interested in the love making style. Some are adventurous and some are like, look, I don't do that. Don't even try it. And it's like, <laughs> okay, fine. Dominance versus submission. Uh, naughty versus well-behaved. I will say that a lot of women really get very naughty unexpectedly to a lot of men. The spanking, the <laughs> hair pulling, the role playing, the dirty talking. Most women, I would say, love that stuff. And that's very surprising to men. Mm. But, you know, I would say – kind of as a practical element to this, Helena, and you can comment on this. I think it all starts with a kiss sometimes. You and a woman can talk together, guys, about what she likes and what she doesn't like. But just like the eyes are a window into a woman's soul, that first kiss, and I mean like a real kiss, really is a window into what she's like sexually. I have found that most people kiss like they have sex. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And just before we want, move on to the kids conversation, which I really, really like that topic, <laughs> I really want to just point out also that by leading a man, leading a woman to be, you know, it's not that you're leading her to be a certain personality type, you're leading her to be more herself, whatever that personality type in bed is. 
And it's there's absolutely no judgment whether her being wild in bed is good and her being proper in bed is bad. You know, it's, it's not about the judgment thing because, again, we all prefer different things. So it's not that, you know, the more you make her feel safe, the more wild necessarily she will become. She will become more of herself because you're making her feel seen and accepted and free to do that. And I, I find it just so beautiful how fascinatingly different and um, varied we are as human beings, whether it comes to our personality in life or personality in the bedroom. And so it is about both partners being able to fully express themselves, who they truly are and what they really want and desire in bed, because that's what makes for great sex. So the men's role here is really not to shape her in any way, but purely to allow her to feel free to be her full sexual expression. I think that's right on the money. I don't think it. Oh, yeah. I don't think that could be any more on the money. And man, we as guys can learn so much from what you're saying, Helena, because I think so many guys are a bull in a china shop trying to get off, trying to force women into doing things that perhaps they're not ready to do. And so many women, for example, Helena, just can't stand giving a blowjob anymore. And it isn't because they don't like penises or being close to them. It's just because they have bad experiences from doing that in the past with a guy. And that's where we're our own worst enemy. Gentlemen, the more you make a woman feel sexually comfortable, the more you're about her pleasure, I'm telling you, it's going to boomerang back to you. She will respond to that leadership with much more desire, much more willingness. You know, a lot of the pickup artist guys used to talk about compliant women. I've always talked about willing women. That's what I want. I want a woman who's willing. And that's accomplished not by forcing her or pressuring her or tricking her, but rather by making her feel comfortable and attracted to your natural masculinity. And indeed, a couple can have a different sexual personality, either jointly or individually, depending on what the situation is, um, et cetera. I know I don't usually throw my wife under the bus and talk about what we do in the bedroom explicitly in this show, but I do think my wife is very normal. And the fact that the naughtier the situation is, like on our honeymoon, we had sex on the roof of the hotel, the naughtier she is in the midst of that situation. The time we uh, joined the proverbial Mile High Club on a commercial airliner, boy, was she in a naughty mood. So (laughs) (laughs) I love your stories. (laughs) That's all of them you're going to get, by the way. The rest of them I'm keeping to myself. Very good. And... By the way, if she's uh, overhearing this conversation, boy, am I about to get some rambunctiously when we're done with this recording, but that's an aside. Uh, but I think it's amazing how there is this innate personality type within us that can perhaps drive unfettered, unleashed sexuality in a way that's congruent with who we are, you know, at the soul level, perhaps. And when we as guys make a woman feel okay and welcomed and not shamed for being who she is either sexually or in general, the whole surround, which includes her sexual nature as a component, right? Our sex lives are going to be so much better. We're going to like women so much more. It's going to be guys as if you've lifted a veil into a sexual realm that you never even knew existed. And like me, you're going to start feeling sorry for the guys who've gotten really bitter and jaded against women and feeling rejected because it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and those guys become their own worst enemy. And Helena, that's why my life's mission here is to get guys down from that and help them enjoy this dance of attraction with women again, you know? Mm, I love that. Exactly. You know, I also love that part of what you said about not, I guess, seeing a woman sexually or the whole sexual experience as it has to look in this particular way so that it's good. You know, that can maybe come from some ideas from porn, etc., etc. The truth is we're humans. We're not actors and acting porn movies or whatever the, you know, the inspiration is. We are all different. And by creating that kind of safe, loving, embracing uh, environment, we can express ourselves fully. And you might see the most, you know, timid, shy girl turning into a complete lioness in the bedroom or whatever the situation is, but it has to be her true inner nature, that willingness, you know, will drive her to be a truly beautiful sexual goddess in whatever exactly way that looks like in whatever kind of personality, you know, 
that can that can uh, transpire into. So there you go. It's a combination of our leadership sexually as men and whoever's in there who's dying to come out and play. Right. The playfulness <laughs> always helps. We talk about that all the time on this show. One last thought before we close. Body image is a huge issue with women. Plenty of women think they're not going to be attractive enough when they get naked with this because either they're too curvy or they don't have enough of a tan or something. You know, women have been shamed into thinking that if they don't look a certain way, men aren't going to be attracted. And I've said on this show time and again, and it bears repeating here, as a man is really nervous over rejection when he first meets a woman. So is a woman nervous over rejection when she gets naked with him for the first time. So the better we make a woman feel specifically about how sexy she is, what her body image is like, how pleasing it is to us, that is going to really help her feel more comfortable with us. And then we start seeing some of the wonderful adventures happen that we've been talking about in this entire episode, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's such a great point. There's basically, even just telling her, Tani, you are beautiful. I love your, you know, your naked body. Because it is sad when partners stop being naked around each other or start, don't let the partner see themselves naked, their, their naked body. It's really sad. So, yeah, your acceptance can really help. And I also find, and, you know, I'm not sure I have a large enough sample with which to draw a conclusion here, but I found that women kind of rise up to their body type with their sexual energy. Like sometimes women who have very voluptuous features become the very strong, athletic, active sex partners, whereas women who have very elegant body types and a very elegant personality may be more of the lovemaker types. I don't know. It happens sometimes. But I do think that how we feel about ourselves spiritually and physically and indeed I don't know, add all the other elements in there too, psychologically, our self-esteem, self-awareness, whatever, really does drive the kind of sex we're going to like. I think that's part of it too. Well, we've run out of time, so I want to send you guys to Helena Nista's wildly popular YouTube channel, which you can reach by going to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Nista, N-I-S-T-A. What a great couple of episodes Helena, that you've joined us for. I know these guys are going to be deeply satisfied in more ways than one, having listened to both. So thank you so much. <laughs> That's fantastic to hear. Thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Guys, head on over to mountaintoppodcast.com. Download a free book I have for you called Sticking Point Solved. That will allow you to have an encyclopedic reference anytime an issue comes up, a quandary comes up, that you need to solve in terms of relating to women. It's a great book. It's yours free when you go to mountaintoppodcast.com and sign up for my free newsletter. While you're there, please also check in with our sponsors, which are Origin in Maine and Hero Soap. Get 10% off extra when you use the coupon code MOUNTAIN10 with purchase. And guys, some of you still haven't talked to me. This is for real. You can get on my calendar and talk to me for free. won't cost you a dime about what's going on in your life. And you know what? I offer you results in advance. This won't be a purely fluffy call. You will emerge from 25 minutes having spoken to me with something actionable that you can put into practice that will make you better with women right now. So go to mountaintoppodcast.com, sign up to talk to me for 25 minutes, and you'll find that I'm exactly who you think I'm going to be. I don't play a fictional character here. What you see is what you get. I'm a normal guy just like you, and I look forward to meeting you. So sign up for that at mountaintoppodcast.com and get all the other goodies while you're there too. Grab all you can. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast.